Welcome to MSD's Floyd's Fork Water Quality Treatment Center here in the middle of the beautiful parklands of Floyd's Fork. Hi, I'm Erin Wagoner. Have you ever wondered what happens to the water when you take a shower, wash your clothes or dishes, or flush the toilet? Where does it all go? Let's go inside to find out. Joining me today is William Ford. William, can you walk us through what goes on at MSD's Water Quality Treatment Center? MSD cleans the wastewater that you use and returns it back to the streams and the Ohio River. Wastewater is the water you have used to take a bath, wash your dishes or clothes, and flush down your toilet. And it comes to one of MSD's treatment centers from homes, schools, and businesses. The process to clean and treat the wastewater takes approximately 12 to 24 hours. It comes in looking like this and leaves the treatment center 12 to 24 hours later looking like this. That's truly remarkable. Let's go see the process. Here we are inside of the preliminary treatment building. The first step is to remove the trash and grit which are harmful to our equipment and interfere with treatment. The bar screens cycle through the water and pull out non-biodegradable things like wipes, dental floss, feminine hygiene products, paper towels, and other large items which could harm downstream equipment. So all the things that you should not flush but should instead throw in the trash. When the wastewater leaves your home or school or business, it travels through a vast network of pipes and pumps to our water quality treatment center. So wipes, floss, hygiene products, grease, and paper towels do not break down and cause clogs in the pipes and make our pumps inoperable. So it's important to stick to the three P's, pee, poo, and of course, toilet paper. Next up are the grit clarifiers, where the grit is separated and rinsed from the wastewater. The water from the grit clarifiers travels through a long series of pipes and are introduced into the oxidation ditch. Here, the water is aerated and circles the tanks to keep the oxygen levels high, which keeps the microorganisms alive and healthy. They aid in the treatment process by breaking down solids. So I see that oxygen is added as the water churns, but what about the microorganisms? Do you add those? Great question, Erin. No, they come to us complements of our customers. Uh, they actually exist in our gut and they exit once we use the restroom. Next up in the process are the clarifiers. Let's go take a look. So here we are at the clarifiers and what happens is the solids from the oxidation ditch are introduced into the settling tanks. And at that point, we slow down the velocity of the wastewater and that allows the solids to settle from the water. And as you can see, you have a nice byproduct of clear, clean water going over the weirs. Wow, that's remarkable. So is this the end of the treatment process? Actually, it's not. Here we are at the cloth filter building where our cloth filters remove 85% or more of any remaining pollutants that may have made it through the system. We're almost to the end of the process. Here we are at the UV disinfection where any remaining bacteria that is exposed to the UV light is sterilized before being placed out into the stream. So William, is it ready to be released into the stream now? Almost, but next we increase the oxygen levels. Here we are at the aeration ladder, which resembles a large staircase. During this process, we increase the oxygen levels for any fish or other wildlife that can be found in the stream. Wow, the water's going really fast. Does it enter the stream at this speed? No, that would cause erosion. We want to make sure our waterways are safe and clean. So, we slow the water down through a series of bends in the pipe as it travels to the stream. For good measure, we send it on a small slope waterfall just before it enters the stream. The cleaned and treated water that we release into the stream, called effluent, is cleaner than the water that is already in the stream. Wow, so you can really see the difference in the effluent water as it enters Floyd's Fork. So how do you know that the effluent water or released water is clean? 
great question. We actually test the water throughout the treatment process. Let's go take a look at the lab. This is our lab where we check to make sure what we release into the waterways meets or exceeds all regulatory requirements. Now, so how does that work? Well, our process specialist, Mike Stevenson, can actually show you around. So the first thing we'll do is go up here to the oxidation ditch and grab some samples, and we'll bring them back down to the lab. So the first thing we do is we'll pour up a cetylometer test. We call it the set test. So we, uh, we grab our mixed liquor from the oxidation ditch, and we'll pour it in here. And uh, pretty much this is a controlled environment for us, so we can see what it's doing inside of our clarifiers. And what you're going to see when you first pour it up in the first five minutes, uh, the microorganisms are going to kind of flock together. They're going to get dense and they're going to start settling to the bottom, which forces the clear water up through the top and kind of filters it as it goes through. If this happens too quickly, then it's not going to catch all the particles. and It's going to get a little discolored or have a tint to it. If it happens too slowly, you'll get a little flock at the top it'll break loose and it'll float up to the top and you'll get some scum uh, floating on top of it. So that tells the operator what adjustments he kind of needs to start making. All right, so the next test we run is a uh, mixed liquor suspended solids. Same sample that we grabbed from the oxidation ditch and what we're going to do is we're going to weigh that up and see if we have enough uh, microorganisms to treat the wastewater that's coming in. So we'll actually take a filter, it's clean, We'll put it on the vacuum. We'll grab a 10 milliliter sample. We'll pour it in the vacuum. It'll suck off all the water, make it kind of a mud so it doesn't fall off the filter. And we'll put it into the furnace and the furnace will finish evaporating the rest of the water. So we'll weigh it again and that'll tell us if we have enough microorganisms to treat the wastewater, if we don't have enough and uh, how much we need to waste or get rid of to treat the wastewater correctly. All right, so the next sample we'll do is a pH sample. Uh, pH is a, a wide range of an acid to a basic, uh, with a number seven being the neutral. Uh, we have a range where we must keep between a six and a nine pH. So we'll test the uh, influent coming in so we know if it's acidic or uh, basic, and then we'll test the mixed liquor and make sure that that pH is good for the microorganisms so it's not too acidic or too basic. And then we'll test it again at the effluent to make sure what we're sending to the receiving stream is uh, within that six and nine for the uh, aquatic life. So we run a phosphorus test and the reason we run a phosphorus test is because too much phosphorus in the water can create a algae bloom. And these algae blooms, when they start to decay, they use up a lot of oxygen and consume most of the oxygen and can create dead spots in water. And it'll kill fish and aquatic life. Uh, it's also, if it's consumed by animals or humans, it'll cause flu-like symptoms or even death. So we keep our phosphorus limits very low going into the receiving streams. So what we always look at uh, every day pretty much is uh, the microscope. And the microscope will tell us uh, what we have in our plant actually. So we look in there and we're looking for specific microorganisms. We have young mi microorganisms, uh, middle-aged uh, microorganisms, and your older ones. Uh, so this tells us if our plant's young or old, uh, and you can do that by looking at the set test too. Uh, so this kind of brings all of our tests together, being able to look at the microorganisms and knowing what you have and that's what's affecting uh, your plant. So if you have a lot of stalk cilia, uh, that's signs of a good DO, a good settling plant. If you have amoebas and things like that, uh, that tells us that our plant's a little young and we need to age the bugs a little bit more. Uh, so that's a very big, uh, part of our job is to know what microorganisms we have in the plant and how that's affecting our quality of our effluent. The next test that we do is a DO test or a dissolved oxygen test. Uh, microorganisms have to have so much oxygen to survive just like any other creature. So uh, we have to test uh, all the oxidation rings to see how much oxygen they're consuming and to make sure that we have enough oxygen in there to help them maintain uh, good healthy life to uh, treat the wastewater. 
We also have to test the effluent DO to make sure that we're sending enough oxygen to the streams to uh, help the aquatic life survive. Thanks to our team and thank you for joining us to learn more about how MSD cleans the water we use. We've seen the journey that water takes from your drain to our MSD water quality treatment centers and the remarkable process that goes into removing all the things that come down the drain with it. You can help us out by only flushing the three P's. So remember, only pee, poo, and toilet paper down the drain. For more information, follow us on social media and visit our website at louisvillemsd.org.